Project Progress and Performance uh, Measurements, also known as the Earn Value uh, management. Um, assume that we're doing a 50-day project, that project going to last for 50 days. Um, that's what we are planning at this time right now. And then we are planning to spend about $400 or $1,000 for that project. And imagine that we're, we're going to see what's going on with the project at day 25. Generally, it's earlier than that. Generally, around um, 10, 20 percent uh, into the project, you start to develop a status report. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to use that day 25, which is about in the middle of the project. So we are creating, we're trying to understand what's going on pre at this time point at day 25. Now, um, we're supposed to finish 50 percent of the work because it's the total length is 50, so 25 is in the middle, so we're supposed to finish about 50% of the work, um, $200 worth of work at day 25. So let's say we're kind of progressing like this, um, doesn't have to be a straight line. Um, so this is called the planned value. Um, so, in also it is called the uh, budgeted cost of work schedule. So, how much it is scheduled at this point? How much was it budgeted at that time when you are talking about? Now we are at day 25. So, this is today, um, day 25. We're looking at what's going on with the project. Now, for some reason, I say things when didn't well that good so we are right here about just finish 30 percent of the work and which is 30 percent of 400 dollars is 120 dollar worth of work so this is called the earned value this is how much we have earned so far only 120 dollar worth of work uh, this is also called or known as the budgeted um, cost of work performed so how much we have performed um, uh, based on our budget so it was budgeted for $120 at 30% time point so that is the budgeted cost of the stuff we have performed as you can see obviously we are kind of behind the schedule we are not able to finish 50% of our work so this um, there is a measurement for that which is called the schedule variance so we are behind the schedule. We're just trying to put a number in there so we understand a little bit easier. So the formula for that is the earned value minus the PV, the planned value. Now we only is accomplished $120 worth of value, but we're supposed to finish by now $200 worth of value. So we are about um, in a... The dollar value is not that important here. What is important is that negative sign, which indicates that we are behind a schedule. Um, so we're not doing so well in terms of finishing the project on time. Now, a lot of time people, instead of that, they use something called index, which is easier to understand, called the schedule performance index. Instead of subtracting, you just simply take the ratio of these two um, and then if the ratio is less than one, that means we are behind the schedule. Um, so in this case, this is 0 0.6. So um, less than one, meaning that we are behind uh, a schedule. So we won't be able to finish uh, this project on, at, on time if we continue at this rate. Now another term, let's say, okay, we finish only $120 worth of work today at day 25 but how much did it actually cost us so say we have already spent it 75 percent of the budget for example uh, 75 percent of 400 would be 300 dollar assume that we already spent it that much so that is the actual cost of what we have performed so far so uh, this is also known as the actual cost of work performed. So definitely we spend it more. So there is a, a measurement for that called cost variance. Um, so that is called the cost variance, 
which is the earned value we have how much we have earned so far is only 120 and how much we have spent until today so um, actual cost so we have spent only earned about $120 worth of work until today, but we already spent it $300. So then that is um, $180. So that's the cost variance. Again, there is a index, which is sometimes more preferred called CPI, uh, which is the ratio of these two instead of subtracting them. So you simply just do 120, that EV by SC, um, so that's going to be basically 0.4. Again, less than one indicates that we spend more, so we are over budgeted. So it's not going to be finished at this um, at $400. It's going to cost us more. If we want to estimate a quick estimate of that, we can simply do this. So that total budget $400 which is also known as the budgeted, um, the BAC, budgeted cost at completion. Um, we can basically get an estimate, a quick rough estimate of this project. If we continue at a rate of 0.4% or 4%, 40% CPI, 0.4, then it's gonna be about $1,000 um, to complete this project. So this is known as the EAC, estimated cost to uh, cost at completion. So if you try to develop another variance matrix, say variance at the completion, you can simply do that BAC minus EAC, which is in this case $600, which is negative again. Negative means uh, at the completion, um, it's going to be overspended. So um, generally in the question, you'll be given this uh, actual cost, AC, PV, and EV, and we'll be asked to basically find out this um, schedule variance, cost variance, also the schedule performance index, cost performance index, also the variance at the completion an estimate, rough estimate of the total. If you also get a rough estimate of how much time it's gonna cost you to do this project, so you can use that. So 50 days is the total, divided by the schedule uh, performance index 0 0.6, which will be about 83 days, over 83 days, if you continue this same rate. That will be a rough estimate of how long it's gonna take to complete this project. Now, more importantly, whether you're going to be asking, answering a question on this in exam or not, all of these matrices is gonna be used in Microsoft Project in the next couple of videos. So it is very important that you understand each of these terms very well before you go into the Microsoft Project.